Annie, what are you doing, girlfriend? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, we're doing a lot around here. Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We've got a couple 400s in the house, like five of them, I believe, huh, Teresa? Thanks. So. We've got a lot to do. So, but anyway, we got Chris's 400 tranny in the house. We have this other 400 tranny in the house, and Chris likes to destroy them. What he does is he puts them behind Cummins, and you know that don't ever work. <laughs> but he's, he's built uh, one of the nicest Cummins in a Chevrolet pickup that I've probably ever seen. Uh, he, it lasted about four months, I believe, and somebody ran a red light and, and T-boned it, and they flipped it and all kinds of stuff and, and destroyed the truck. But this is the second one that he's built. Uh, he's having troubles keeping uh, trannies behind it. Now, it is a 12-valve. It's not souped up. Don't make this crazy power or anything like that. But uh, he's been putting, uh, I believe, salvage yards units or something like that in it, and he said he's just tired of doing it. But anyway, we're going to take this unit apart first, see what's any good in it, then we're going to take this vi uh, tranny apart in an another video. That way it's not too long. Uh, we'll split them up, and then uh, we're going to take the best pieces out of both units, put them together with all of our uh, Allison clutches and our high-pressure rings and new bands and stuff like that. We'll upgrade it to a four-clutch, 4L80E style, thin steels. It takes a different backing plate uh, to do that, so you kind of got to know what you're doing there. Uh, a couple other things I'll try to explain uh, in the video what we do to these units uh, to make them survive and stuff like that. So I don't quit saying that stuff like that, huh, Teresa? Yeah, and that. And that. Now, if we were still using the original yoke, I'm not sure how he's doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a yoke seal back here in the back of the shaft. This seal here seals the yoke. Uh, when you slide the yoke on, it, it, the yoke goes over it, and then it seals any oil coming down here and getting on the splines or coming out of the little weep hole in the back of the yoke. Now, we can still, they make a special yoke. Uh, now, you notice this here is a bolt-on yoke or shaft here, but they do make a two-wheel drive sliding yoke. Uh, that doesn't bolt on. You can put it in any car that way. Uh, and then the yoke will still seal on the seal. Now, at the end of the yoke, uh, I don't have one here, but on the end of the yoke on the inside, it's chamfered about that far. Uh, where the seal physically works back and forth in that area right there in front of the splines. So, now this is a fully manual unit. We welded the governor on it and fixed the valve body and all that type of stuff. So, oops, don't want that socket. Bless you. Now you can see here, and we did the, the modifications to the tranny and he just took it home and installed the valve by and the governor and stuff like that and made it work himself. Now you can see here we welded the tab here, here, that way these are non-functionable. And then we welded these here, down in here to where these don't move neither. We weld everything out. You can cut the gear down, but we don't take it off. We want it to still stay in its same location, but it will not spin anymore. Same aspect, but that's how you make a fully manual governor right there. Good to know. Good to know. Good now, to since he's running the Cummins and this is fully manual, the Cummins doesn't make any vacuum unless you have a vacuum pump on it to physically run the modulator. Now, anytime you uh, get, do away with the modulator and plug the uh, valve where it, with this plug right here, it makes the modulator not move, the valve not move. Let's see if I've got a magnet here, I do. So it still has something in there? Yes, it still has a modular valve in there. Might not come out. Okay. This thing's probably got a lot of metal in the pan. There it is. But when you stick this plug in there, it blocks this valve all the way forward and gives it max line pressure. Uh, instead of your uh, vacuum modulator controlling how much pressure you have at idle, like 60 pounds, when you plug it, it goes to max pump pressure. As max as it go can be 180, 200, 220, uh, depending on what boost valve you have in there and what pressure spring you have in the pump. So I wish he had a vacuum pump on it because he goes to the river and uh, stuff like that. So. Uh, and we know what happens at the river because we used to go there. We do. We st we're <laughs> fixing to build the old shop truck. I think put a better motor in it so we can start going and playing again. But anytime you go and, and run a, a tranny at max pressure for long periods of time, it, it physically wipes out the pump. 
power glides don't like it, 400s don't like it. I mean, there's multiple trannies that do trans brakes on, uh, 4060Es, they don't, the paddles don't like it in the pump, it breaks the rotors. I mean, just all kinds of stuff, so. Now, it's kind of funny, it's got a electric speedometer, but it don't have the electric gear on the inside for it. Actually, that was supposed to be in a... Well, where's the test housing for that? I didn't get that part of it. Now you can see this is the electronic speedometer, but it has a plastic gear in here where it, it won't work with electronic. It's got to physically have a gear style. So that's just plastic. That won't work. This gear has to turn another gear to make it work. So it needed a, a, a reluctor wheel on there to physically so the electronic part could count it. So that won't work, but he's not worried about a speedometer, I don't believe. Had a little bit of metal on it. I'd say it did. You can see it here. This is the back of it, and this is the front of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when the case bushings start wearing, tail housing bushings start wearing, then the reluctor comes down here and starts grinding on this thing. Because this is actually on the bottom of the shaft, so once it starts wearing, everything starts dropping, clearance goes away and starts grabbing on that. So curious to get this apart and see how bad it is. Now we've had these units since we moved. Um, they weren't in no hurry. But we are up and running now, huh, Teresa? You got it. The old famous rubber pan gasket that we just love to throw away. <laughs> a lot of trash in here. That's a lot of trash. We'll see what type of filter he's got here. Now we'll be putting a screen filter on this. That way uh, the pump will suck everything it can suck through that filter. Now you can see here it's got a regular paper filter and it is just totally stopped up. The screen filter. It probably only comes about, uses about this much of it, but if you look down into the neck, you can physically see the screen. Let me grab this filter. I don't want to get it dirty. It's a trick. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the little screen down in that one mm -hmm. where this has material. See, it's kind of hollow through here. If you go down into the screen, it probably starts right through here. And a lot better filter. Does it, it doesn't catch as much particles. But when you're running a high volume pump, stuff like that, you don't want that pump to have any problem sucking fluid uh, through the filter. And these filters, brand new, will not supply a trans brake tranny. So that tells you how. Now they do trap all the trash though. Mm -hmm. But they will not. Uh, they'll trap all the trash, stop up, and they burn the tranny up. That's what happens usually. There was an O-ring right here. I just dropped it down in the, into there. So we're not going to see that, but you can see on this tube here, it says case and filter. They do make metal ones of these too, uh, but this does go a certain direction, okay? We always double O-ring this in since it's above the fluid level. That way it can never suck any air. Check it for any cracks, anything like that, that's any type of damage. Uh, it does still, like I said, this unit must be really stock, except my valve body work and stuff. So we still have our passing gear solenoid here. Uh, little connectors on the outside when you push the gas pedal down uh, it sends power down to this switch right here and trips it down to second gear there's physically not no such thing as passing gear except just dropping down to the other gear All the bolts are half inch on the valve body except these three right here are seven sixteenths through here. Just be careful when you tighten them down. You can always pull the threads out real easy on these smaller bolts. And you have to have that those bolts in them because uh, the reverse pack passage and stuff is right through here and there's really a lot of pressure right in that area.
Now what we do here, since we made this valve body fully manual ourselves, what we did is we welded the governor, everything out. We come in here and block this hole right here. There used to be a small hole here. Um, trying to figure out about an eighth inch hole maybe. A little bit bigger than this hole here possibly. Right here and we TIG weld that up. And once we do that, we come in here and then we take this valve out. So we always take the valve and stuff out before we do any welding on the valve body, of course. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yeah. Makes it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Get this out. And what we do to this valve here, this valve is right, oh, this end is right over that hole. It's sitting right in here like that. And what we do is we grind this land off. You can see here I put like four stop sign or square cuts on it. And once I do that, then I take and grind it all the way around. Just try, you don't have to get it all off there, but a, a bunch of it. And that's pretty, it's pretty simple, really. You do those few modifications, plug the hole, grind the land off, weld your governor out. Uh, you can even leave the modulator in there and just unplug it. And uh, you got max pressure there too. So it's pretty easy to make it fully manual. Now, if you want it to shift and still have the manual capability, uh, just leave your governor, governor alone. Just put it in there, and when you put it in low gear to 100, it's going to go into low gear. So, And it's not going to shift out until you shift it. So it's pretty simple. Just grinding this valve and plugging this hole does a lot. Set that stuff down there. You got, got your, yeah, your manual valve. Now what we do too on some of these, this one here we didn't. We'll come in here and we'll block this spring. We like to put a, a, at least a small spring in here. Actually we use the fourth gear accumulator spring on a 4L60E. And it's just enough to keep this piston up. And when it keeps it up, it keeps that snap ring or clip right there down inside there. Instead of this staying at the bottom all the time and this clip being above it and it can break, fall off or whatever, we leave some tension on it with a smaller spring. But we used the 4L60E, I believe, fourth gear accumulator spring that's in the case. And we also... Uh, on extreme conditions, which we'll be doing this next one here, we'll be blocking this hole here. We'll put about six check balls down in here, and then we'll pin this right here and block this hole completely. So, what does that mean, pinning it? Uh, that's uh, basically taking a punch and putting some pins right here, just some little oh, marks see. right there, and kind of pinning the ball in where they can't come out. Okay. Never know, somebody else might not have understood that neither. Yes. Now this here is something you really want to learn too, especially when you start swapping parts. They make two servo pistons for the band. They make two accumulator pistons for the valve body. Flat uh, lip, I guess, or raised part of the piston. If the raised part of the piston is on this side, you have to have a flat here. If you have a flat here, the raise has to be here. You see what I'm saying? It, it, or vice versa, I might have said that different. But uh, like I said, if uh, you don't want to get these mixed up because if you put a flat here and a flat here, it'll lift up high enough out of this bore and cut this seal. So you want to make sure one of these is flat and one of them has a raised part on it. The other, well, I don't have the other valve body I'll show you, but just think of this looking like this on this end and this end looking like this. So it doesn't matter which way it is, it just no, has to they, be one way or the other. One way or the other. Okay. Yeah, pretty simple. Now, these also have a little washer that goes on right there. Now some of these um, designs have a clip that will fall out. So when you take this cover off, the clip will fall out and you'll lose it. So you don't want mm -hmm. to do that neither. Something you've done before, I'm assuming. Once or twice, possibly. Okay, you definitely want to match your gaskets up. They make multiple gaskets. Uh, and the difference is going to be right through this area right here. You want to have a pigtail on this little hole here. And one will not. You want to match it up on the bottom gasket too. So, anytime you take your tranny apart, don't destroy your gaskets. 
until you look at them. Open your overhaul kit and they got four gaskets and you go, oh, ooh, I better not tear my stuff up. So I better match this stuff up. Good identification. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have our passenger solenoid there. Switch. You can see, this don't have a tail. You, you don't want to mistake that as the tail, but the tail will be right through here on both gaskets, so you've got to be careful. And these usually say case, valve body. So you got to be careful. And see, this is where he messed up at. I'm glad I caught that, guys. Look at this. Now, this is another reason. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I give him all the stuff to go home and put this back together. And the tranny failed within minutes, I guess. I'm not for sure. But if you look here, he's got the gaskets on wrong. Case. That should have went here. I was thinking that that was part of the, yeah. Uh-uh. That, that should have went got, there. Yeah. And then valve body? Mm -hmm. Should have been on this side. Oh, goodness. See? This thing's been very hot. But you don't want to tear the gaskets up. You can see here how this would seal this area through here. And uh, when you put the gasket on backwards, it don't uh -huh. see, it don't seal. You got all kinds of leaks, all kinds of stuff. And these gaskets are different from. Well, I was wondering why you couldn't see that one hole through there like you were saying. Right, I had to, I don't have my glass on, so I was kind of going, huh. And these lights are a lot different in here too. Mm -hmm. So always match up your gaskets. That's the main thing. Of course, we got all of our check balls here. Now, if I would have been building this personally, I'd have left that check ball in, this check ball in here, and then every one of these others has been chunked out of the hole. Throw them away. Bing. You only want to leave two, that one and that one. Let's throw them in there and keep them. Don't want to throw nothing away anymore. <laughs> now, we do have our center support bolt here. We have our reverse clutch ply, third gear clutch ply, and we have a lube circuit going through here. So, yeah, I could blow air in here and... Blow it all over Teresa. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. They have that funny bolt in there and it looks stripped. So, so far the valve body gaskets being on Ron will burn the tranny right up. So, especially something with a Cummins, something like that, heavy. Now this is your reverse servo that applies your reverse band. You have your accumulator here, accumulator spring. And it makes that clip ain't broke off. Grab that shaft and make sure it don't wobble really bad in here and it's not wobbled out there. Okay, I'm going to find my air blower and I'm gonna blow this out right here a little bit. Because what they did is they put a hardened bolt in here well, if if uh, he did it himself, it's really hard to say. So that's not normal. No, it w it would have a twelve point bolt in there. Well, this thing's got like a I'll try and get that in there. And it could be metric too. I, I don't know what he's got here. No, it, it's right. It is right. He's just all stripped off. Hope I can get it out, actually. That's what happens when you get older and you don't got glasses. Let me see. I'm going to put this in there, but it, it don't look like it has any teeth on it. Uh, hope I can get that out. Let me get old Brutus over here so I can give it a big old whack. Because <laughs> <laughs> that bolt is totally stripped. And uh, if I don't give it a good whack we might not be able to get it out and then we're going to be in trouble which I'm not sure which case we're going to be using right now too because he said one of these have all kinds of stripped holes and stuff so oh, I'm shocked that come out wow. that thing is almost no splines on it at all for that socket to grab it was so messed up that's the only reason why I grabbed it now the 480E bolt's about that much longer. You definitely do not want to use it. You don't want to drive it down in there. So we have to put a new bolt in there for sure. Now you want to look here. There's this nail looking 
thing right here that slides back and forth. If you lose that nail in the parts wash or car wash, wherever you're having your case cleaned, then your linkage just slides out the side of the case and then it'll, you'll put it all together and you'll drive it a little bit. Next you know this slides over and your manual valve falls out right here. These just barely catch anyway. The nail comes out, next thing you know it slides that way and the next thing you know it quits moving it. So what we do is we'll take and bend that right off the bat before we pull the tranny out, just like that. That way I know it's never going to fall out. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, huh? Mm -hmm. If you wonder where that nail come from, if you look at your governor, that nail right there, when you buy this overhaul kit, that, this gear right here, comes in a little kit, it comes with new nails. And that is the same nail they use there. Mm -hmm. So if you got a governor gear kit, there's your nail. Or you can go to the hardware store and get you one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like one you would find in there. Yes. I gotta get my contacts checked. I, think. I know you said yours was needing some work done too. I think I've worn contacts for what, 12, 13 years or so, if yeah. not longer. Now this is a six bolt pump here. Uh, if you notice the pump uh, bolts do have washers on them, uh, Teflon coated or rubber coated on each side of the washer. We still, even though we do a, put a new washer, we do still put some seal in here. These bolts down here at the bottom are really critical because this is where your pressure goes through from your pump into your case. So you can always have fluid in these bolt holes here when you take the bolt out. Not so much down through here, but mainly through there. Mm -hmm. seal. There it is. Mm -hmm. This is our little seal that went here. It says case. But we put two on here. That way we know it can't suck any air there. Now... Get my glasses back on. That way I can see what they've done to me. See if they got this all stacked up here. In fact, I might have had a little water through there at one time. A little bit of rust through here, maybe through the cooler line hole. Oh, yeah. Vent hole, too. Mm -hmm. That vent hole's all stopped up with mud or something. Mm -hmm. We have our gasket here, our pump gasket. We have our pump o ring. But anyway, six bolt pump. Let's see what type of case we have here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pump case bolt holes. Pretty neat, huh? But you notice this one here ain't drilled and tapped. Well, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll drill that hole, tap it, and then we'll come in here and drill this hole right through here. If you look here, it's gonna be here. All, all the stators have all the holes in every one of them. It's only the pump body that only has the six, seven, or eight holes in it. But you can always turn your stator over and find your holes that have not been drilled. There's one. There's one right there. Wow. Now, if your case has, if I had another lug right here that's missing, we would drill and tap that. We would drill and tap that. And next thing you know, you got all your bolts holding your pump in. Anytime we do an ultra belt, we have to have a case with eight holes. Eight lugs on no matter what we do. We won't use a seven or a six. We just won't do it But like I was showing you it's easy to drill these out that way, but you don't want to drill them all you want to make sure you count <laughs> You might have your little happy hole there <laughs> You don't want that <coughs> Now you notice this does have a Teflon ring on it right here now this isn't a real high pressure ring like our orange ones are over there, but they're probably still better than the factory metal that usually comes in these two. So we do have a selective washer here to set your clearances up. And you can see this one here is a three. Been pretty hot. I'd like something trying to push up it forward a little bit. These bolts are different lengths. There's three lengths here actually. You have your long, your medium, and your two shorts. 
So you have an extra long one there. The extra long one goes right here. Okay. Now we were basically, why he brought me two cores is too, is because we were worried about pump issues. Now this tranny didn't last very long, I don't think, probably because of the valve body or the gaskets were put on wrong and that's why it just killed it instantly. But we want to look at this pump. You can see good bluing here, some bluing, a little bit here, a little bit left here. But let's look at the pump body. Boy, that's a nice looking pump body there. Normally they'll wear right here through here, uh, especially with a modulator on hook, shift kits, big high horsepower or big high pressure will cause that issue. Uh, GM finally come in here and realize, hey, if we put some line pressure oil right here and give that uh, gear some oil on the back side of the gear, it would last longer. Not all pumps come in with this notch in it. You, if you high horsepower trans brake stuff like that, you always want to find a pump that has this in here. That way we can get more oil on the back of this gear. So, but not all pumps are that way. See that? Now, can you come in here and make that notch? You sure could. Get you a Dremel tool or something like that. If you were good at it. Yes. Well, that looks really nice through here too. Now, I did want to show you here. This pump bushing is wadded. Can you see that pump bushing, Teresa? It is melted. Actually, here's. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, that's the pump bushing. Oh wow. I mean, that is just melted, melted. So he's got to look for dowel pin alignments, stuff like that. I mean, I, I don't have the converter. Yeah, I do. I do have the converter over there. But I don't know how many times that converter has been in that unit, out of that unit, in another unit. We really don't know anything about that. But I don't remember that converter over there when I looked at it having that type of damage on it for that type of bushing to look that bad. And we're going to get our pressure regulator valve out here and our boost valve and sleeve. Now, when you buy a shift kit, it's going to come with a different spring for here. They do make an aluminum boost valve too. Get out of there. There it goes. They do make an aluminum boost valve and sleeve right there. We don't recommend that at all. Let's see if he did anything crazy here. A lot of times guys like to come in here and use a stock spring, but they want to stack this little horseshoe. And when they do, uh, it ups the, the pressure that the pump can produce. Okay, like that. They'll add two of them which it'll lift that up a little bit and give that much more pressure on the spring. Always find a good metal boost valve. Trans brake applications, anything like that, we never want to use an aluminum one. So, new bushing here, new bushing down here. Clean this up, he's got a really nice pump right here. I need to take the bushing out too though first and make sure the bushing hasn't spun in the pump. If the bushing spun in the pump body, then the body's no good. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed there. But that's a pretty bad looking pump bushing. He, like I said, if he would uh, chip this uh, 12 valve up, or excuse me, yeah, 12 valve early comes up, this shaft wouldn't last nothing. He'd just twist it right off. But he's not going to make it a hot rod or anything like that. So we're not going to be putting billet shafts or anything like that in this unit what he tells me now <laughs> they say one thing but leave the door and it's always something else <laughs> now we have our forward clutch assembly here you can see we got five clutches in there they're not an Allison clutch or anything like that but we definitely want to get rid of this wave that's going to be gone if a uh, high stall converter Anything like this that he's doing, we can get rid of the wave and you really won't even know we did it. You know, a customer's vehicle, you get rid of the wave, you're not, they're not going to want to put it in gear when they back out of the driveway to go forward. So that's a must on normal people, which I don't know what normal people are. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to comment on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, all Allison clutches is going in this one, get rid of the wave there. He, he was, like I said, we weren't going to put any billet parts in there, but sometimes I'll throw stuff in there that I have just to help my friends out. Let's see if this has a good sound. 
Just a little stutter. <laughs> <laughs> the good ones have a ting to them. They go ding, ding. Look at the splines. Make sure they're not getting messed up. Uh, make sure there ain't no notches in here where your forward clutch have been, you know, grabbing really hard and stuff like that. Stuff like that. I got to get rid of that one. I could paint you every time. You Thank. Or we'll put tape on your arms and I can rip pieces <laughs> of tape off of your arms. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah, Thanks that a would lot, be kind of funny. But anyway, uh, mm -hmm. you can replace these plastic right here with brass washers. Like this one is here. But you can get a brass one for this here. You can actually get bearings for these. There's multiple things you can do to that. But, okay, we talked about high pressure, stuff like that. Major high pressure. And if you look at this, what do we see here, Teresa? Major high pressure. This is not good. Nope. I think this backing plate has seen better days. It's, oh, it's, it's. It's in pieces. I'm surprised it's still together. Yeah, it was kind of um, blow it out. Yeah. You know, gaskets being on wrong. You know, anything like that can cause this issue. It didn't have no big boost valve and spring or anything like that. It had stock physically of 400 pressure. So, but when you take the modulator off, it gives it all of it. You know, even in reverse, so. the river and you're like 10 miles back up in there <laughs> all my friends they're making it home <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all my friends are making it home regardless regardless whether it's forwards backwards or sideways we're getting back to our trailer come on uh, boy i mean he just, yeah. you know we still want to get it apart that way we can oh, see I if know. we can save the drum Anything like that. Because it's got the sprag on the other side of it. Yeah. It's like, this one, excuse me. This I have a roller clutch here on this one. Excuse me. Wow. Unless somebody updated the... Man. Wow. You see it's stuck up under this land right here. There. Come on. There's another piece. Hmm. You think that just slide right out of there, huh? Yeah. Is it like it looks maybe a little welded or something? Yeah, it's definitely. That's what's the you put it through. That's it's test. Up. Yeah, it sure did. Okay. There we go. Is that a clutch or clutch material? Oh, that's the clutch plate right there. The metal plate's here. That's the material. Ain't nothing on there. Oh, no. Five of them. Toasty. Yep, steel's all purple, blistered. Now this is a, the best style piston and drum assembly right here. It's got the metal piston. It's got the stand, I guess you could hear, that's adjustable. You can get them at different heights uh, to get more clutches in your drum without changing the piston. Let's see, our forward one, it's got one too, see, I didn't show you that. It could be taller or it could be the same. Actually, it's taller, see? Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your third. But, uh, let's see if we have a roller clutch in here, if we got a sprag assembly. You know, it's not going to be a lot of RPM, so we don't have to worry about snapping, slinging off, and stuff like that. I'm not going to make it shift so hard to second gear. We're just going to destroy this roller clutch. We're gonna make it work really nice, but in a diesel application, they don't have to just shift really hard. You just wanna to try to get the shift really short. Looks really nice in here. No chatter marks. Scotch brought that up real good. Let's look at our roller clutch. 
You can tell there's not very many rollers in there, but still that's really strong. You know, they pull thousands of pounds of weight with trailers and stuff. You want to look in here, make sure there's no wear, funny wear right here where this roller runs. And all these right through here. Okay. Now this piston right here comes out. There's going to be two seals on the piston. One seal in the drum. Uh, in the drum, we will be leaving that seal out. That way it uses the whole surface area of the piston to apply the clutch instead of just using a partial of the piston. Anytime we get more surface area to push on a clutch, it just the clamping uh, is a lot better. Same way with the forward drum. It's got two seals or three seals, one on the piston here, one on the inner piston seal, and then the seal in the drum uh, we'll be leaving off too. That way it covers the whole uh, piston to apply the uh, clutch in, in first gear in the forward range. We have our engine braking band, which we'll put a new one in there. We're going to leave it in there. We're not going to leave it out. Look at something here. You can just kind of see where this drum's been rubbing right here against this right here. See that? Mm -hmm. Now this snap ring, you always want to get keep the opening out of this area through here. You want to always put it over here somewhere. Put it under a land right here. Never want to put it in the opened area. I do make a kit where you can come in here to the servo hall and get away, from, uh, do away with the servo here. And it actually bolts a piece here that helps push on this snap ring right here to hold it. It's a piece, it's a bolt on piece. Now, now this is some funny stuff. What we got going on here? One, two, three, four, five, six clutches in here. Huh? Guys, help me out on this one. Wow. What do we got going on? Uh, I don't what? Know. Oh, <laughs> the lining come off the, the plates. I was going, where'd all the clutches come from? But if you... Sounds like somebody's here. No, maybe not. No, maybe. Could be. Uh, I can't tell if this was a wave or not. It could have been just a flat steel. Uh, now, normally they do have a wave down in here. I like to use the 4L80E wave. It's a smaller wave that goes against the piston. Sometimes you, you might have to change the support out to put it in there. I don't like to use the big old thick 400 wave. The smaller uh, 4L80E wave compresses a lot easier, but it still keeps the shock off the roller clutch when it applies. So, but anyway, we got clutches that just fell off. Oops, look at this. Oh, that's what that oh that's funny yeah, yeah. Looks like it had a now lot of the only reason why this did this is because of water being inside the unit mm -hmm. you could take a new clutch put it in a, a bucket of water and overnight the metal parts gonna be on the bottom the clutches are gonna be floating on top of the water I don't know what it is about water releasing the glue on the clutch plates I thought it had ten clutches in it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought it had three there but if you look yeah. there's the paper there's the metal there's the paper. There's the paper. That's funny. See here. Look at that. Same here. <laughs> so, we got a lot of work to do. But you can definitely see where this was rubbing on here. And that's not good. That's not because of these clutches being messed up. That's because this drum, something's going on down in here. This shaft is what holds this drum up. It sets down in here, right here. If this shaft is setting lower than it should be down through here, this area, then this could be the cause this is rubbing on here. There's not much room in between here, but there's got to be enough. Of course, you can see here too, the ceiling rings are starting to dig in here. Mm -hmm. Right here. The rings are really close to the edge of the lip right here where it, it cuts them, uh, makes them shrink and go inside the bore. But that's what wore out right there. That drum's no good. Just make sure when you find another drum, uh, they do make these drums, uh, like here, see there's a check ball and a hole. Well, some of the uh, check balls are in the pistons. If you swap the pistons around, you could have a drum that has uh, two ch uh, check ball in the drum and a check ball in the piston. 
So you got to watch what you do there. You don't want to do that. Now I've took the aluminum pistons and we'll take and uh, put some JV weld or something on it and, and put that uh, ball in the piston where it can't move. It freezes it there and then we use the ball in the drum only. So there's all kinds of ways to do it. It's just knowing how to do it. So. Now this snap ring right here is special. This is our beveled snap ring. It's going to be flat on this side. It's got a, a chamfer here. You never still, you never want to put the opening in here. You always want to turn it, put it in here. If you're buying, you know, making a totally race car unit out, you can buy that uh, piece right here I was telling you about that holds, pushes here. But that piece only works on the this snap ring. It does not work on this snap ring. So. This snap ring here is not trying to be pushed out of the case. This snap ring is trying to be pushed out of the case because your intermediate piston is bringing your clutch and stuff this way. So that's why they made that little piece there. Yeah, this is a stock, stock GM unit. This thing ain't ever been apart. And how I can tell is GM did some of this stuff right here. They added a blue ceiling ring right here. That's all original equipment right there. Now we will go back with high pressure rings, but we will be leaving this ring off right here. All the other rings will be put back on. It'll look just like that. New one, new one, new one, leave it off. You got a washer right here. Now your washer kit will come with a brass one. You can put a brass one there or a plastic one either way. We don't see a lot of issues with that washer there. This is probably the only drum that uh, doesn't have a ton of springs in it to keep the piston off, to keep the clutch off, slow the clutch coming on, all that type of stuff. Any type of cross leak or anything like that uh, it can cause major issues, uh, bringing clutches and stuff on when they're not supposed to. But if you notice this intermediate piston only has three springs. It doesn't have all these filled up, stuff like that, because it's really they don't have an issue with a cross leak problem here because it's a circuit all to itself. So like this here, it has your reverse here, it has your third gear here. There's multiple things. That, there's always going to be a cross leak between these rings to a certain extent, and you've got to compromise for that leak to keep the clutch off when it's not supposed to be on. So never, you don't. I never put them back in. I mean, I put them back in on this, but on the 480Es, they have like four. I'll, I'll trim one down on each one of them because they're really bad about bending this right here. The 480Es are. So, but it confused for a second but we have a roller bearing here so it's just like that chamfer up chamfer sits down in here and this sits on top of here sun gear you want to look at really good see if there's any pits that have been hot and hot looks like, huh? Mm -hmm. Really purple. Oh looking. yeah, especially on that one side. Mm -hmm. I have a new one over there. Now we always replace them, 90% of them anyway. So here's another roller clutch here. When they, when they, when you just flip it over and a roller falls out, that tells you that your spring tension is getting really weak. See that? The tension on that spring to keep that roller forward is, is weak. So just replace that. Don't try to pull them out or nothing. nothing. These springs break real easy. Next thing you know, you'll have it running around in here and tearing up stuff. Mm -hmm. You always want to look at this drum. This is a real critical area here. These pins like to walk. These four pins do. And when they walk, they walk this direction right into the path of this washer. 
And what it does, it starts shaving the edge of this washer about a quarter of an, or an eighth of an inch or so all the way around when the pin starts walking. What we do is we check to see if any of them's moved. If they are, we'll take them, press them back down, and then we come in here and we TIG weld this in. We TIG weld these tops of these pins in right here where they cannot walk down anymore. You want to scotch bright or not scotch bright? You want to 80 grit this really good. Drum looks really nice. You want to scotch bright this area here because you're going to have a washer running here. Put your new bushing in. Check them for wobbles or anything like that. Really good there. Now we're getting to get this apart. This tranny's in better shape than I thought it would be. And it's probably because of uh, when he put the, he bought the tranny, he put it in, did the, the valve body gas, valve body trick that I give him. And uh, he put the gaskets on wrong and it killed this tranny right off the bat. If not, this tranny might have lasted a day or so. so you just never know. But, uh, gonna be a couple bearings here. Gonna be one on this side here. In and out of race. Now this roller right, cage bearing right here, some of them don't have this many bearings in them, about half of them. You always want to find the one that has all the bearings in it, that way it'll be a lot more uh, stable and stuff for him. This bearing here, same way. Uh, sometimes when you take it apart, half the bearings are missing, but it's, it's built that way. But you can find a bearing that has all the rollers and put it in there. Kind of weird how they they build something nice and then they go cheap for a while. And then we're always trying to find the better parts to get the cheap out of it. Check your races here for any pitting, anything like that. This uh, bushing right here, anytime you replace this bushing, you wanna, it's gotta be sunk down inside because this bearing that sets on here, this part of the race sticks out. So you do not want that, bear, that bushing up flush and then you stick that on there because it's going to break the bearing when you uh, bolt this thing together. So that's a no-no. Just always remember to put that bushing down a little bit farther. Scotch bright all your areas where your new bushings are going to run. Okay, here's our planet overheating problem right here. I mean, I talk about pins turning purple. Mm -hmm. See how that one looks nice, looks nice, looks nice. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. That's why that sun gear started cooking the oil. This gear got so hot, trying to lock down, probably catching on fire and all that type of stuff to make that much heat to put that stain on that, that gear right there. Unbelievable how that can do that, huh? And this only goes one direction, flat, chamfer, chamfer down. This bearing goes like that, chamfer down, okay? So we got a bad planet too right here. You can tell that gear is just purple, purple. Mm -hmm. Those are probably on their way. Look at that, really dark. Oh, yeah. But once this one goes, it gets so hot they even start cooking too. Could that have, the gaskets have caused that? Possibly, it could have messed up the loop circuit. It could have messed up anything when you get your gaskets on wrong. So, of course our ring gear, you wanna look at it if you got a one of your gears are bad here in your planet. You want to make sure it hadn't been scarring the ring gear up through here on both sides. You have a load and a coast side. Try to it up really good. <clears throat> we got our reverse band. Pretty dark. I mean, see this thing is whatever miles is on this thing. This is all original stuff right here. Probably one of the better cores that was tore down. Actually. And we will be, you know, you have this uh, washer here, and then you have physically the thrust washer here. Uh, we will be getting rid of both of these, and we'll be going back with a roller bearing. We'll actually have to uh, put about a 30,000 shim in here, too, because this, this tranny, we can adjust the clearances in the back part below the center support, and then we can adjust the clearances up here. So we want to get everything set really nice, especially behind it. This guy's truck country, so... <laughs> But anyway, guys, uh, not too bad. I was really impressed with it, but he never probably made it to the river in this one. He probably just barely backed out of his driveway and he, and he realized that he had a problem and, and it did that much damage to it that quick. So 
Well, Teresa, we know we appreciate you definitely. We appreciate Annie. We appreciate you guys for definitely watching and subscribing to our channel. We got more to come. We got this other tranny here. We'll be doing a, another video too because we need to see if he's got a good planet and the other parts we can use in that unit to repair this unit and get him going. Y'all have a great day.